Let's try again. All right. Hello. Now I should be able to. Hey. Now. Oh, Lord and all the. Uh, all the. At least I did. Waiting, connecting, connecting, connecting. Yes! yes! Hey, it oh. works. <laughs> So cool. Hey, how are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm a, uh, I'm a little bit sweaty because I've been singing all day. What you've been doing? Recording. Yes. Wow. The recording yeah. has started. And you? How are you doing? I'm also like a sweaty because I was <laughs> actually uh, my hair is still wet. I was swimming. I I tried to. I even might have a mask on my face, but uh. <laughs> I was swimming in a cold pool. We have a swimming pool, but it's uh, terribly cold the water there. And so mm -hmm. I put my wetsuit, like a oh, dry suit, actually. And mm -hmm. so I was like, oh, but I have the life. I needed to go to move a little bit. So you've uh, been recording. What have you been recording? Uh, the, the new Africa album. So <sighs> in a different studio than originally planned because I can travel. So I had to search for a studio nearby. Yeah. And I've been doing that for the yeah last couple of days, and uh, it's going really well. But it all feels just feels a little bit weird, I must say. But I enjoy singing. I enjoy um, finishing the album. Yeah. So, but you are doing it um, in the studio, not at home. No, I don't really have uh, the possibility to do other than just simple demo vocals. I don't have a room that is soundproof. Yeah. And um, yeah. you know how it's like. You have you probably have your own studio. I don't. We have a very small apartment. Well, and I am have... just to tell you that I am um, like an anti studio singer anyway. So I mm. uh, this is the room where I record my vocals. It's nothing like it's really it's not prepared to record vocals, but it's prepared to record my vocals. Like okay, because <laughs> I record. Uh, I record with a microphone and uh, usually without even headphones. Only the backing vocals I do with the headphones. So I have a, like a little loudspeaker right mm -hmm. in front of the microphone in a little mm -hmm. distant distance mm -hmm. with me and uh, the microphone and uh, I sing like a live takes. Yeah. That was that was how I recorded my first album, uh, my Winterstorm already, and that was the way. I feel personally most comfortable with recording albums, but everybody is different and everybody, yeah. we, we have our ways, so. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting because when I'm recording vocals, I never really get the right sound on the headphones. Ta -da! Right. And the problem, <laughs> the problem I have, I sing within yeah. ears, I sing live within ears, yeah. but uh, I, I listen to it quite loudly and yeah. um, what I like to do is have one ear on and one ear off so I can hear my voice just organically Natural. and not digitally Natural. and um, yeah. like that I get a good mix for me yeah. but one ear is a little bit tired at, at the end and goes like slightly deaf mm -hmm. but sure. uh, I guess with classical singers like singing just in an open space is more most comfortable and yeah surely because I I for what happens with me that um, if it's a very hard, like a fast tempo song, like a really rock song, mm -hmm. then I kind of, I like to have the headphones so I feel like I'm in the mix already in the band, mm -hmm. with the band mm -hmm. singing. But when it's a ballad or where I need yeah. to find my voice really sounding as natural as possible. I, with the headphones, uh, my problem is always I start to push my voice and yeah. it doesn't mm -hmm. sound natural anymore and I don't like the results and it's like, ah, I need to, I need to get away from this. And you know, mm -hmm. that has been my way to really, to feel more relaxed also. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing that you start pushing and then, oh, what am I doing? I'm, I don't mm -hmm. suddenly have a sore throat and I never have a sore throat when I'm singing and mm -hmm. that's, that's an... Yeah, that, that, what what is your tip? Because I think there's a lot of people also in the live, um, Instagram live. What is your tip when you do get like a sore throat or a little bit hoarse that when your voice is like... Well, then, then 
then that is a sign to stop singing for sure. <laughs> and go sleep, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's like, hey, no yeah. speaking. Mm -hmm. But, um, but um, in order not to have that, you know, I have tried everything. The posture is the most important when you are singing in front of the microphone that you mm -hmm. can feel that you are in a good, good posture and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, breathing free and all that. And every time when it's a recording process, you tend to get a little bit nervous about, you know, the, the takes and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when I'm recording, I, I hate taking too many takes. I hate, I need to get it done properly. Mm -hmm. Four or five mm -hmm. takes, it needs to be there. If it's not there, it's not the day to record that song. <laughs> mm. Really. Yeah. Uh. That's what I did today because yeah. I know singing is just, it's not, it's your body. And when, the way you feel like in that morning is going to determine how well you're going to do yeah. during yeah. a live show or for the recordings. And yeah, every day is different. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's um, being in a studio is less pressure than a live concert, but there's different emotions. You don't have the adrenaline and the thing that is just a one taker. And with me in the studio, like you say, I prefer four or five takes. But if you keep on pushing on, on, the, on the little details, you lose the emotion. You start getting frustrated. And yes. um, yeah, right. I... I sing max four to five hours and then I'm just, you know, done. I'm not a machine. I'm a human being. And no, nobody is. Nobody is. But you're doing also packing vocals and harmonies. Mm. And like I am doing, I love, actually, I love working on the vocal arrangements always. That's yeah. a, it's a fun part. But it's, um, yeah, it's not, uh, people might not even understand the, it's not only that there is one voice that you do, you double or you triple sometimes the, mm -hmm. the, even the lead vocals and mm -hmm. you do so much work behind uh, that actually is not even so much heard in the final product, but it mm -hmm. needs to be done in order to everything, you know, be in the frames mm -hmm. where, where they need to be. But uh, wow. Do you but enjoy so singing harmonies? I actually don't like doing that. Really? I, I sing half of my harmonies and the other half we have uh uh yeah backing vocals and um uh, uh marcella bovio is one of our main girls since a long time and she's very good and very quick and uh with me i don't i f don't feel like i have enough experience nor did i enjoy doing it and there's people that just hear the harmonies instantly yeah, and I started to learn how to play the piano. Nice. Also, for me uh, to, to when also like now, like recently, or since a couple months, yeah. Oh wow, Simon, that's amazing! Thumbs <laughs> up. Yeah, but don't oh. say, I, I'm not going to play Rachmaninoff soon. <laughs> <laughs> I will never. I, that's not my goal. My goal is to be able to write songs myself and maybe accompany myself nice. while I sing. Yeah, that's what I do. That's what I do. My but piano. you, you play pretty decent piano for me. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to reach that level. For me, it's going to be chords and some really simple stuff. I I I started with the piano itself. I started when I was six years old. Um, mm. It was just the the um, my elder brother had a drums at home, so that was not something I was interested in, and so. I, uh, and we had a little, little keyboard, so I started to play like, some kids' melodies, kids' songs' melodies, and my mama mm -hmm. was asking, do you want to have a piano lessons? And there mm -hmm. I went, uh, started when I was six, and, and uh, I went to universities, and I did a lot of studies with piano itself. I used to play quite well, not anymore. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. I lost it. Uh, but... As a matter of fact, that's my instrument with what I write music. Mm. So it really is a great help and uh, necessary. My piano is so out of tune now that I, I'm just waiting that after all this corona, <laughs> oh, that, the <laughs> tuning guy can come in again and tune mm. my piano. <laughs> yeah, I have a friend of mine. Uh, well, my son, he's now six. 
and uh, he started to play the piano because oh, nice. Oliver's teaching him. We uh, really nice. We got a really nice e piano from Yamaha, and I had I had the urge for a long time to learn how to play the piano because I had the feeling I could not express my musical creativity just by singing a melody because it's different than when you're when you're playing the piano or when you just hear the piano vo other vocal lines can come to mind than if you were just sure. singing sure. you know sure. and um so i really wanted to have this piano for a long time and it, it took us a while to get it but it okay. it feels like it's the right phase in my life to start learning to play the piano and i don't think it's ever too late Never. I mean, I'm 35 now. I can I can still learn new oh, things. Oh, you're very young. You are the. I yeah. I wasn't six when I started <laughs> to learn the piano. I played the flute when I was 11. I started way later with music education, and I never went to conservatory. But um, I guess it's always good to aim for improving and learning new things. Yeah, and I enjoy it, but I get frustrated if I don't make any progress. You know, I have to be more patient. Same, Same here. Same here. I still do that. I mm -hmm. I constantly try to find find ways or check how other artists are doing or even, you know, I'm producing my records. I'm on my own. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, but I have gotten help with the incredible musicians I'm I'm having in hand today. But also everything is a learning process, everything. And there is mm -hmm. just only things you can learn from music and from singing if one day i've been asked many times that don't you but you sing uh but like or in general if somebody would ask me that so you have reached so much of your with your voice and i would say what i've reached i i haven't reached little bits here and there i mean there is mm -hmm. just this is never gonna end um, the mm -hmm. whole learning process will never end. Mm. Um, do you do you feel also that your voice changed after after pregnancy, or when you were like changing pregnant all the time. and the months after? Because with me there was a huge, really? huge change. Yeah, because my voice, the the register of my voice became much wider. I could go way deeper than I did before. So that's and, interesting. I guess I believe for me, of course, we women, we all react differently. It's so, mm -hmm. it's such a huge thing that we go through with the pregnancy and giving birth mm -hmm. and all that, becoming a mother, all the hormones, everything is, everything mm -hmm. is affecting us. But um, I feel that I've been training so much in the recent years. So my voice has been radically changing and yes, and it's changing through the age, through, mm. the, the, through the years, it is changing, mm. um, depending obviously your training and what you do with it. I mean, how, how you, you know, physically how you feel also, that has mm. everything to do with the voice because it's, the, as you said, it's the body mm. that sounds. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And what kind of shoes do you wear when you record vocals? I put a couple of books. <laughs> 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 I am standing. On, I I am standing upon a couple of books. <laughs> like, well, the heel is something like this. I have a little, mm -hmm. like, a little heel. Heel, yeah. So that I can get my butt, my posture more. Ah, okay. Yeah. That that's the thing that I learned when I was uh, when I had singing lessons. My teacher always tell me to tilt my pelvic a little know? bit. And the problem is with my posture, I have a, a duck butt, you know, it's like, boink, it's really sticking out. And for me to make that movement feels very unnatural. And if I wear heels, it's only making it worse. Worse. Mm -hmm. So for, for the recordings now, I actually have some workout shoes in the vocal booth, which have kind of a nice um, cushion. Yeah. So that I, I like to move while I'm singing. Yeah. My face is in front of the microphone, but I like to keep my body warm and move. Yeah. So I'm like doing a tiny workout, and I, a, I feel that's like, a good thing also that you you can do that without making a noise. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. without making noise. <laughs> but it's a good thing that you can you can move because then you you your um, breathing gets more relaxed as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. 
that you don't, you know, just stay stiff and, you know, oh. mm -hmm. and sometimes you forgot breathing. You get, you forget to breathe properly. Mm. So yeah. it's a good thing. And when you're tired, that's, that's the most dangerous thing. That's what I've learned already. I want to do my best, but when I'm tired, I should just tell whomever I'm recording with, like, this is it for today. You know, I push yes. myself sometimes too much. Yeah, yeah. Who doesn't? But, uh, but yeah. for the recording, you want to have it perfect, right? As close to perfect as possible. But for me, the most important thing is still the emotion that needs to come across. I don't want to start sounding like a robot on, on the recordings. Never. But uh, Never. if I'm Never. honest, yeah. I love live shows more than being in a studio. And sure. there's musicians that love sure. being in a studio. Sure. And I love to be at a different place Every me day. too absolutely yeah. if and i, I get to that. choose from those two absolutely mm -hmm. let's get out of there again <laughs> and in this situation where we are at the moment like even more but uh yeah if i listen my records after i've recorded them I, those days after the all all is done after everything is finished i listen my records okay i did okay but then when i go and sing these songs in my live shows Mm. I sing them so way better. Mm. <laughs> it's always mm. like that. It's always, it's the recording, the moment of making it perfect or thinking this mm. needs to be perfect. Mm. It, it's never perfect. What is perfection? It's, it cannot be perfect. But mm. at the moment, at that peculiar moment, you think like, mm, it needs to be this way. Then you mm -hmm. go and rock with your guys and have fun and the, with mm -hmm. the fans and you enjoy the moment, you enjoy being in different cultures, traveling, all that. Mm -hmm. It's part of the... And the songs change. So yeah, and also how you say. feel yeah. at that time if you're yeah. energetic. And like I say, you, have, you don't have that adrenaline kick when you're mm -hmm. in the studio than what you have live. No, nothing at all. Hey, let us have like a thousands of people screaming in front of us when we record. We need to have that. Yeah, like every, after every take, you hear. Woo. Yeah, you're doing good, girl. Yeah, yeah. Like, we want more. So God bless. So God bless. Yeah, exactly. But then it's another take. No, again. No, again. No, again. It's like, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can tell you. I was once some. Um, uh, with my first album, I uh, I had a producer on board. That was the first time, and until now, the last time I've been using a producer. Don't okay. take me wrong. I mean, there was a lot of good things about working with the producer, um, but there was also this fact that he didn't know me as a singer. I mean, he had never worked with me before, so um, he made me sing like forty takes, forty, no. four zero, mm. over short lyric line like a really like absolutely three mm -hmm. words or so mm. it was so frustrating i i was killing myself because what you sing a yeah as i said you sing it four or five times if it's not there it's not meant to be mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah it's often not becoming better after no. many takes no because that's what that's when you lose the motivation that's when yeah. you become insecure sometimes and start making mistakes that you would normally not do no I'm sure but um i'm always looking forward to hear the songs when they're completely finished mm -hmm. like the we we work with the producer and um we also record we create demos with false lyrics and then we rewrite the lyrics and then make demos again. So I can... Doesn't that bother you sometimes that you start seeing the old lyrics there? Yeah, I had that today. <laughs> that! But it's only a couple of words. This time with this record, we tried to already push the demo lyrics in the direction where we wanted to have the final lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. Because in the past, it would be complete bullshit lyrics. And <laughs> you, <laughs> you'll never, you never forget them. No, it I never think so. That's you know? terrible. Yeah, right. I've been there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, uh, I like, I like to do that when you're really prepared, when you know the, the new songs that you don't have to do so many takes. But you know, you have good and bad days. And today I recorded the ballad because I felt my voice was very low and I didn't sleep a lot. So I thought, okay, I'm not gonna push it. So I, I listen to how I feel, and that's how I 
proceed and tomorrow hopefully after a good night's sleep i can belt really loud again because that cost me a lot of energy singing classically goes without sleeping almost but the belting i find i need a good night's sleep for that yes sure sure you're right and how many songs you still need to go you need you have still four i think left yeah mm. four songs mm. yeah yay I am I, doing also some recordings, uh, but uh, completely different type of music, electronic music. I have oh. our electronic um, project, project called Outlanders, so I am finishing some of the vocals. Tomorrow probably I will hopefully finish with one song. But I'm again doing it only together with my producer friend Thorsten mm -hmm. and, and uh, only two of us we are working okay. on project that is uh, hopefully one day gonna see a day of light but uh. if you have a, a good connection with somebody who you feel like the workflow is just right then yeah. then uh, then you can create some really great stuff i think that's very important that you feel comfortable with the person you're working with because it's so personal i guess yes writing music and, and singing and it's so intimate also and yeah totally totally yeah, it's very special you have people like that, you found. I I feel myself very lucky that I have uh, found amazingly talented people around and uh, mm. and so that you can feel super relaxed with. And so then, then the magic happens when it's like that. You don't need mm. to feel worried or nervous or or somehow shamed like I have been, you know, when I started my solo career of tea. I, I was so ashamed of uh, showing any of my bits and pieces that I had written because I thought they were all shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was so critical, you know, really. I thought that, that's, forget about it. All the professional songwriters showing their songs for me and I'm like, should I like this or not? I mean, that was mm -hmm. the beginning. And nowadays doing it on my own, oh, as we just talked about the learning, music mm -hmm. is about that I, ha I have actually a, a kind of funny story that just came to mind because you say your first album and I remember listening to that but then I guess I, I still had a mp3 player <laughs> was yeah no yeah. iphone slash mp3 player and I had a I had to have surgery uh, on my teeth I had to have my wisdom teeth surgically removed because they were you know they were lying crooked or whatever mm -hmm. Yeah. And I asked them, can I listen to music? And they were like, okay, sure. Because the thing is, when they're working here, it's so in your face and you, it's nasty. Oof. And then I was listening to your first album. I was like, okay, put Toria really loud. Oh, it's gonna gee. Me. <laughs> and you, you were there with me when I had my music <laughs> <recent teeth. laughs> That's so fun. Yeah, I was in the Netherlands. Oh. I was in a, on the operation table and they were like pulling out pulling in my mouth and I was like list focusing on your voice like okay let this be over soon and I can go home and everything's fine so that's kind of a funny association with your first record <laughs> <from my wisdom. laughs> yeah it's true, it's true. I love that yeah. thank you so much so yeah. that I will never forget thank you Simone <laughs> no and, and, the, and the time that you you uh when I visited you in, uh, in Argentina. Oh, yeah. I remember when uh, mm. you surprised no. me with a, with a baby. Yeah, there was a little package. <laughs> yeah. nobody, nobody knew. knew nobody yeah. knew about my pregnancy. Yeah. There were some yeah. fans, you know, at the, at the time I was living in Argentina, yeah, and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I had a huge belly already on my turning to my eight months, and there were some fans uh, going, meeting me in a shopping center. I had a, it was cold. Um, in June, around June, so it was already getting pretty cold in Argentina. So I had a really thick winter coat, like a Michelin. <laughs> yeah. Coat. So I was with the shopping bags in front of my belly and meeting with the fans. And hmm, some girls in Brazil, I remember them telling me, "You're pregnant," and I just said, mm. "No, nah, what? I've been eating too much pizza. I completely, completely, my whole pregnancy was like a. I didn't." I didn't need to let anybody know that I was pregnant. So you were one of the first persons ever yeah, that I got to know that I have a baby born. I was 
I had become a mother. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> Let me present you a little package. <laughs> yeah, because we we invited you to come to the show. I was like, no, Tarya has uh, other <clears throat> things going on. <laughs> you come, you can come to our house. And then you opened the door, and the door went open even further. And then there was the baby. It was like, <gasps> <laughs> just a little, like this. Yeah, yeah, just a little little surprise. Yeah. Ay, ay. But so nice, you know. We go far already. <laughs> Your Vincent is now six. Naomi is yeah. seven. Turning yeah, to yeah, eight. Yeah, I, I became pregnant shortly <sighs> after we yeah. met or like a year after approximately. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Naomi is turning eight now in July. And... Wow. <sighs> so that's <sighs> eight years ago already. That was a cute, tiny little baby. And now she's... Yeah, already eight. It goes so fast. A it's... little, it's crazy. And how you're dealing with the, all the touring and being a mother, you know, how you're dealing with all the things that you cannot be with him, with your family. Well, I never sent. Uh, I never took um, him with me on tour. So he only saw a couple of shows. And mm. um, I know that you had known me with you a couple of times. For for the first four years, yeah, every time, mm. and that's that's something we we didn't do, and uh, I had good days and I had bad days. Yeah. You know, I, I went into work mode, so I would try not to think too much about it. But if I were if I were thinking about it, I would sometimes become very sad, of course. But then the times that I was home, I enjoyed it so much more. And when I was on tour, I could focus on being on tour. So mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. never easy. It's mm -hmm. never easy. The the moment of leaving mm -hmm. leaving the family behind is like, Phew, it's never easy. Mm -hmm. And then when you're on stage in the morning, you're still back then cleaning diapers. <laughs> and then after the um, the plane landed, I remember talking to Michael Ackerfeld from Opeth about this because he also has kids. Yeah. He's like, yeah, in the morning you're still in daddy mode and, and doing all the dishes and whatever. And then in the evening you're a rock star. Mm. It's such a strong <clears throat> contrast. It is. And uh, what, what was also hard for me was to switch rhythms instantly. When you come back home and you're jet lagged, you immediately have to be in the rhythm of your family. And sure. back it's... in the day, it was like you had a couple of days to adjust and but now it's like tuck, 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 day, night. Uh, yeah. Day. Yeah. And it can yeah. be very tiring sometimes. <laughs> you, you come uh, from the long tours. No tour is uh, easy physically. Oh. Mm -hmm. We come like a, we return home like wrecks. And, uh, yeah. Wrecks. And, jet lag. And, yeah. Jet lag and all that. And, mm -hmm. and the, the, the little one is there like, you now <laughs> mm -hmm. kind of. but mine is definitely understanding she she really lets me thankfully she really lets me rest and mm -hmm. and uh, she's there playing with me you know I'm sleeping in a bed and she's in the bed playing and she just mm -hmm. needs to be near and you know hug and mm -hmm. kiss me all over and eh, super tender and but it's it's that it's very and for the older you get Simone just Listen to me, Grandma oh. talking. <laughs> okay, okay. The older you get, harder it gets. When you, you know, oh, it's not getting any easier. I mean. Yeah, when they're small, they just they grow so fast. But then when they're older, mm. they are aware of you leaving for a while, and they feel the time at a, a, a different way than they were when they were little. They had no feeling for time, mm. and now he really says. I'm going to miss you. And there was a time where he, I wanted to watch some Epica YouTube videos and he would get sad because he would associate that with me being yeah. gone. And now right. he's like, everybody in, in our village, like, yeah, my mom's famous. I'm like, Psh. <laughs> I'm yes. not famous. And, and my, da and my dad cool is that? He's like super proud. The coolest person. My mom is the coolest person because she's famous. Yeah. Uh, he loves to <laughs> listen to metal songs. Yeah. So when friends come over, they have to listen to metal and they're all a little scared, but for him it's normal. And when he was in kindergarten, he would draw vampires and monsters yeah, as yeah. if it were Teletubbies for him. Yeah, 
Exactly. And other kids were scared, like yeah, you know, or, or Not, they said yeah. like, uh, why is he already watching this kind of stuff? Or how does he know about vampires? And it's like, yeah, he watches yeah. Lime Before Christmas. That's cult in <laughs> our house. I mean, we we watch. That's them. a good one in ours too. <laughs> yeah, and I yeah. I got gifts from fans like yeah. nightmare before christmas related and he's like oh that's jack and he sleeps with one of uh one of the little oh, you see, yeah, that's so. really cool that's really cool yeah, yeah. it's my mine is is the same i mean uh, you know being a rock and roll baby being on tour the first four years of her life that mm. is the life she knows she got used mm. to you know being on the road with her family being mm. all the musicians and crew and all that mm. so she was playing the first four years with the grown-ups and it, definitely that is kind of reflecting in her you know they they're asking what is your favorite color well black yeah <laughs> hi the girls usually you know girls who like pink and, and barbies purple mm -hmm. and barbies mm -hmm. and, no, mine is like no can i just paint and black is because black absorbs observes all the colors so mm -hmm. I'm like, okay well that's a good explanation at least <laughs> it has all the colors i like it it's yeah, strong vincent color. has like a fake leather jacket he calls his band jacket so when, when he wants to look cool he puts on the jacket that's the best yeah. and he's also very artistic already he he had his phase where he loved to play with tractors but he's not into cars and he just loves being creative like painting and he already has a very creative right. mind where he, He's constructing machines in his head and we just have to figure a way out so we can make it with him. Like he wants to build an airplane or whatever with mm. whatever, what we have at home. He has the most absurd ideas. Yeah. So I think he might that's become an engineer one day. But that's or... the best, you know. Um, offer your child what you have in hand. Uh, mm. I mean, the kids... Seriously, they don't need the plastic toys. They don't need. Mm -hmm. Mine was playing in a backstage with whatever, whatever she had in hand, mm -hmm. and incredible creations, and mm -hmm. you know, having so much fun with mm -hmm. whatever doesn't need to be a expensive toy or you know something that you play. Usually, the children they are playing with something like that for two minutes and it's gone, mm -hmm. but letting your child to be creative and inspired by everything, you know, mm -hmm. takes hours and hours and so much fun to look at them being so, so you know, did free. She, and... Did she also have like different instrument phases? Like she liked to play the drums or the guitar or sing like you? Did she she a... started to play piano when she was four. That oh. was her. Now so mm -hmm. she's already quite actually quite pro with it she she oh. plays like the classical but also some lady gaga and uh, other things despacito so yeah. <coughs> her own <laughs> selection of songs <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but uh but uh she also has uh, she has a little ele electronic drum set she and takes guitar lessons so she's very busy with the music mm -hmm. uh, sings goes to theater school every weekend or used to go to theater school every mm -hmm. weekend that's uh, so yeah creative child is <laughs> i think that's for me i love that he loves to play the piano and now that we have it in our home yeah he would just he goes voluntarily to the piano and starts playing that songs sense. And it's not like a punishment that we have to tell him, okay, you got to practice, okay, now everyday mm -hmm. piano lessons and Oliver's teaching him. And um, I think it's it's pretty amazing. I tried to have him sing like uh, a falsetto, like, can you do that? And he's mm -hmm. like trying to do it as well. <laughs> because my father actually, uh, bef when he was uh, a young boy, he was actually in a, in a choir. And I love that sound of like yeah. young yeah still yeah. boys that high yeah. pitch singing i think beautiful. it's beautiful and i was hoping like maybe <laughs> i can get him to do that. yes yeah. yeah but um so far he loves to play the piano and whenever he's happy and something works the way he's like yeah. he goes like this <laughs> so, i wonder where that comes from <laughs> 
I don't do that. I don't. I don't do like yeah, but yeah. <laughs> He's a little metalhead, I guess. Yeah. Or loves metal music. I don't think he likes Epica too much. <laughs> no. Well, hey. But, uh, but he loves he loves one song in particularly. And when he came to see me play when we were in Stuttgart, I wanted to play the song for him in the during soundcheck, but he was. He was a little bit sad. He was still too young. I think now he would find it cooler. Mm. So I walked, you know, the the Longhorn in Stuttgart, the LK Longhorn. Yeah. With the big backstage where you can watch over the stage and oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I walked from the stage with my microphone to the backstage and I was singing the song for him in the backstage, you know. And you could nice. But he was he was not so much into it. I thought if I play his favorite song, he would like it. And he had a big phase where he loved to play the drums. He even has a drum kit, but that was a phase, so that's gone now. Ah, but it can come. It's so interesting. There are these phases, you know. There are the phases they come and go, and they come and go, and we can be there only to support them. I mean, mm -hmm. we should not. Obviously, I felt a little frustration. I felt a little frustration in Naomi when she was five and she didn't practice the piano that much. And so I, I was kind of like trying to, okay, well, mommy can help you. And she has the teacher, so I don't. She completely ignored me. Like, do not tell me what to do, mommy, because mm -hmm. I don't like this. And then suddenly, poof, she mm -hmm. like goes to the piano and practices all the time you know, without me telling anything. Mm -hmm. So... It's just for, it's a learning. We also live and learn through our children because it's, mm -hmm. you know, we have only one. <laughs> yeah. We have only one. And mm -hmm. it's amazing to see that, um, uh, how they are like our reflections in so many ways, in so many ways, in good and bad. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I look at it and I think, yeah, I'm, I'm your mommy. I still sometimes can't realize it or that, that I sometimes think, wow, you're so stubborn. Oh, who does he get that from? I'm very stubborn. It's like, oh, shit, that's the mirror right in front of me. <laughs> right. So I have to stay calm and think, okay. I was like that when I was his age. I turned out okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be patient. I thought I was a very patient person yeah. until I became a parent. And I, I thought, okay, wow, it can be very challenging. But I love the age he is in now. I mean, he's becoming more and more a boy. Yeah, but he's fantastic. a very philosophical personality and he's very romantic and yeah, yeah there's yeah. many beautiful moments during the day and now in this weird times sometimes um i notice that we are frustrated in this challenging times but kids are as well i mean yeah well hey we are Super. figuring out how this works imagine how how they perceive it with their tiny Brain. Yeah. <laughs> Here in Spain, we haven't been able to go out. This is the fifth. We are now completing the fifth week indoors. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. haven't been able to go to the park or, yeah. or run anywhere with the child. And with the child, seriously, mine is missing her friends and just mm -hmm. little runouts or going out with the bike like everyone. But mm -hmm. uh, for children, it's terrible not to be able to go out and you know, play. That's... Yeah the world is out there and for every one of us it is the same but especially yeah. the kids are we are allowed to go out into the forest and like ride the bike or go on on the parking lot but all the all the um, playgrounds they're like shut down with tape and fences and everything and it's it's mm -hmm. so sad you know yeah. but it it's nice. necessary and we've become very creative we have a boxing a uh, bag hanging in the living room. We have the trampoline. Yeah. We build a swing. That's but that cool. broke down mm. already. <laughs> but anything I'm occupied. Mm. Yeah, everything. Yeah. I really, I really loved seeing you, Simone. I think that I, I was just going to give a call for Julian that um, he's waiting there to sing a, or play couple of songs with me i was oh, still thinking okay. to sing a couple of songs <laughs> yeah, we talked for an hour or so no, like, uh... but it's okay i love talking with you it was really really nice seeing you again and it's been such a long time i have missed you so same nice. here yes long time last time we saw each other was on Hospop. yeah 
Yeah, some two years some, ago. Two years ago already. When we had the funny, funny, quick photo shoot with Tim with uh, with the apples, it was like <laughs> oh, I love yeah, right. apples and very yeah, successful really photo shoot with him always in couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> quick. He's quick. Yeah. Very okay, good. Okay, then I wish you all the best. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Stay creative. As as well, and good luck for the recordings and everything. And thank you. And, uh, Please be safe and greetings we'll, to the family. We'll stay in touch and uh, yes. maybe one day I get to come visit you then. Yes, hopefully. And wait. try the pool and the cold water. <laughs> yes, yes, you do that. <laughs> okay, take care. Thank you, Thank you Simone. Bye. See ya, bye. <laughs> you are leaving? You are going. I'm leaving. <laughs> uh, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to hold on a second if I can now get to Julian. Let's see. Go line with Julian. Now, again, he's doing the same thing. Hopefully, he's there. <sighs> Maybe he should. Mm, cannot see him. Oh, yeah, it was so nice to talk to Simon. Yeah, no. Julian. Hey, Julian, can you send me a request? I cannot, I cannot. Me puedes mandar un request? <laughs> Porque esto no anda. Por favor. Juli, me mandas un request? <laughs> I again feel like a complete idiot. This phone is not letting me go live with anybody that I want. Oh. Hopefully he can do that. <laughs> Talk show with Julian. No, no, I, I, I am hopefully going to be singing a couple of songs with him. But if that works, we are trying to get, a get in touch with him here. But in the meantime, I really hope you're fine. View, hold on. Oh, hold on. I, there is something seriously wrong with my phone. Doesn't let me do any. So I will try to do again another live video after this. So if you bear with me, I will go back live again and then I will sing a couple of songs for you. All right.